a video of yourself walking away from the computer. So what we're going to want to actually launch is this little script. It's a bash script, as you can see, bash shell script. Now it's going to idle for 30 seconds. That's sleep 30. And then it's going to lock your screen with GNOME screensaver command lock. And then it's going to start up motion with just the word motion. And what this means is it's going to redirect the output to home folder slash dot motion slash log. We're just going to create a log file that shows what happened while motion was running, which you might want to take a look at if there was a problem or something. Now, you might think it's, if you know what this to means, it means standard error. I don't know why, but motion output goes to standard error. It, the people who created the program mixed up standard error and standard output. So we're actually redirecting to standard error. If you don't know what that means, you don't have to worry about it. It's not a, not a problem. The script works just fine. Um, so we're going to create a launcher that uses this script. Now we'll right click on our panel up here and click add to panel. Choose a custom application launcher and the type is going to be an application and terminal. The name is motion and the command is just the path to this start motion file that I was just showing you which is home slash dgw because that's my name slash scripts slash start motion dot sh now if you keep this file somewhere else if it's just in your home folder then you know it could be home slash gym slash start motion dot sh this command is just the path to the file wherever you want to put it now comment uh, delay 30 seconds lock the screen start motion that's what it does and we've created a launcher we could have used a different image here but you know you can pick out an image that you think represents what it's doing if you want to now, oh yeah, what we need to do still um, is we need to make that uh, the file executable. Uh, so chmod plus x means make it executable start motion dot sh. Now this launcher should work and we'll see if it actually does. It's going to start in 30 seconds after it, after it turns on the screensaver. I should have set up a fancy screensaver. Anyway, when we come back, you see this new terminal that's opened up. We're just going to close this terminal, and it's going to shut down motion. If I've set everything up and it actually works. We'll find out in a couple seconds. Come on. <laughs> There we go, screensaver. And my camera is on, woo! Okay. Now we're gonna close this to shut down motion and let's take a look at the images that were created just now when we ran the program. Now remember that it only records when there's movement. So I could have walked away for, you know, 10 minutes and it wouldn't have recorded anything while I was gone. Um, it only records when there's something happening. Now let's watch this file. Oh, see, it just went green because now it's synced up to the server. There's me acting stupid. Yay, that worked just fine. And in our snapshot folder, we have all these snapshots. There's still images. Um, so we've got it working. Now, you might want to delete, well, you do want to delete old files. I mean, think about it. If you're creating these video files all the time, it's going to start filling up your hard drive, and it's and you only have two gigabytes available on Dropbox unless you paid for service, which you really don't need to do. Um, you can just use the free service. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a cron job that will delete old files. Cron job is just a way to run a script or do a task at a certain time and date. Like, say you want to run something every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, you know, I, I could set up a script with Cron every Monday morning at 8 a.m. will play a song and wake me up or something, you know? 
I mean, that would be, that would work. Or I could run maintenance every night at midnight. Um, or I could run something that'll, uh, you know, tell me when it's Easter. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to use cron though. Um, now I made a file. Uh, we're not ch modding. <laughs> I'm just, just sort of typing on autopilot. We're gonna open up this file with get it. Uh, what I call it? Clean Dropbox. Sh. Now, what this is gonna do? This is another Bash script. As you can see, it finds files in your home slash Dropbox slash Motion folder and home slash Dropbox slash Motion slash Snapshot folder. It finds. See, type F means file finds files in these folders that have m time plus seven. That just means they were um, created more than seven days ago. And if it finds these files that are more than seven days old, it's going to execute the rm command. Rm just means it's going to delete the file. So this is a very simple script that just deletes files that are older than a week in your motion folders. So it clears out the old stuff. And we're going to want to run this script every night automatically, so you don't have to actually, you know, type it in a terminal and run it because we're we're too lazy for all that. You know, we set it up once and it just does it automatically forever, right? Okay. So what we're going to do? I'm going to show you another file: clean Dropbox dot cron. Now this is the cron job that we we want the system to run. Now this 33. That means 3.30 a.m. Because these first five fields where we have 33 star star star, these five are for the date and time that we want the job to run. And then we just put the file, what do we want to run? Well, we want to run a file called cleandropbox.sh. That seems fairly straightforward. Now we just need to tell the system that we want to use this cron file that we've made. And how we do that is we go cron tab. And now the path to the file, which in my case is scripts slash clean dropbox dot cron. And now we got to make sure that worked, which it seems it did, but I'll just show you. Cron tab dash L means list your cron jobs. Here, it worked. That's set up as a cron job now. So that's going to run every night and delete your old files. So what I've gone over here is a very basic setup. Uh, here's an idea. If you have a smartphone, you could probably use SSH to connect to your computer from your phone and kill the motion process or the start motion process. That way, if you're about to enter your bedroom, for example, you can just turn off the camera before you walk in. That way, there won't be any video of you walking away from your computer or walking back to your computer. Um, and all the video that you do get is actually going to be useful to you. Um, it's you know going to be actually stuff that happened while you weren't at the computer. Um, you should be careful if you use SSH because there are security concerns with it. Um, but you know you can look into that if you're interested in doing it. Uh, I think you also want to be uh, conscious of the privacy and security concerns if you're storing video from inside your house on the internet. Uh, I chose Dropbox to store files, both because it's easy to use for our purposes, but also because of security considerations. They use SSL for data transmission and AES-256 encryption for the files that are stored on their servers. Um, they state that Dropbox employees can't see your files. Um, I would call that a low risk of security problem. I'd say it's acceptable, but whatever you choose to do, you know, you should just be aware of what security concerns um, are out there you know, decide if that's acceptable for you. Um, if we're taking video that's actually taken inside our house, you really need to be care careful about what happens to video from inside your house because that is private, sensitive data. Um, now, you could use motion with actually more than one camera. If you had a bunch of wireless webcams, you could set up a pretty nice and inexpensive homegrown security system. This video is just intended to get you started quickly and to show you how easy it is to use a regular webcam as a security camera. I'd encourage you to read through the configuration file and the motion documentation so that you can customize the setup to your own needs. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's been informative.